In the last few videos, we saw how connecting the output of an inverter back up to its own input created an A-stable circuit that spontaneously oscillated. If we use two inverters, the circuit's stable in two configurations, 0110 and 1001. This is bistable, and it's the basis for registers and static RAM cells used in computers. If we add in two OR gates, we now have a mechanism for controlling which of the two configurations the inverter pair takes, and we can redraw this into its more familiar form with the set and reset input. In the previous video, there was a mistake. In this graphic, I said that when set and reset are both low, the output Q remains unchanged. When I assert reset, the output goes low, and when I assert set, the output goes high. But in the graphic, on the third line, I had both set and reset asserted. This was a mistake, and it should read 1, 0. Sometimes we just do dumb things. The configuration for when both set and reset are both asserted is actually undefined, and the next state depends on which one is asserted longer. Next, I said that each OR gate could be implemented with two relays, and each inverter with one relay, which gives us a grand total of six relays for each set reset latch. But, then I wanted to build an SR latch with just two relays. Now there's actually a couple of OR gates already in this design. One here and one here. You might be saying, well that's just a couple of wires. And yes, it is. It's called a wired OR gate, and it only works in certain circumstances. Remember this slide, where things easily fit into one of two categories for logical 0 and logical 1? Well, there is a fly in the ointment, and that fly is the disconnected state. Disconnected doesn't really fit that well into this dichotomy. Technically, disconnected is also called high impedance or high Z. You'll see these terms in the literature quite a bit. Why do we use disconnected as a state? Well, it lets us do something we normally can't do, and that's directly connect the output of two gates together. When I was deciding what logic levels to use in this project, the two main options I considered were disconnected and 12 volt logic versus 0 volt and 12 volt logic. What's the difference? Well, here, the off state is literally disconnected, while here, it's connected to the 0 volt terminal on the battery. From our perspective so far, they're pretty similar. In the off position, the lamp's off, and in the on position, the lamp's on. So, what's the difference? Well, each has its own advantages and disadvantages. With 0 volt and 12 volt logic, the off configuration is a bit more useful. For example, if I want two lamps, one for off and one for on, then that's easy with 0 volt and 12 volt logic whereas this just doesn't work with the disconnected and 12 volt logic. The off lamp on the left never turns on. For this example, connecting off to the zero volt rail is useful, and this most commonly matches the logic we tend to use in silicon chips these days, particularly CMOS logic. But, let's say we want to connect the output of two switches together. When both switches are off, everything is okay, and when both switches are on, everything still works. But what if one switch is off and the other's on? For the rest of this video, I'm going to use the terms disconnected logic and zero volt logic, which refer to the off condition. In all cases, on is still 12 volts. For the disconnected logic, we get a pass through the lamp and it glows. For zero volt logic, we get this alternative pathway of least resistance which bypasses the lamp and actually causes a dead short across the terminals of the battery. Now, it's not quite as bad as that. But, some lithium batteries really don't like dead shorts. If we go back to our two relay SR latch, for disconnected logic, all pathways back to the zero volt terminal of the battery must pass through the lamp or a relay, which is acceptable. But if we use zero volt logic, we get a dead short straight away. 
So the reason I can use two relays in our SR gate is because of the disconnected state. Let's call these switch outputs A and B. We can look at the truth tables for when A and B are wired together. In disconnected logic, it means when both A and B disconnected, then the combination is disconnected. If A or B or both are at 12 volts, then the combination will be 12 volts. If we use zero volt logic instead, if A and B are zero, then the combination will be zero. If they're both one, the combination will be one. But if A and B are different, then we get a dead short, which is bad. Hopefully, many of you will notice that the disconnected logic truth table is basically the same as the OR gate, which is why we call it a wired OR gate. Sometimes we assign a different meaning to disconnected, and two examples we'll see in later videos are open collector logic and tri-state logic. Now, I don't want you to dwell on these too much now, but just be aware that sometimes we use the disconnected state different ways, but the main advantage is that you can tie outputs together. The reason I'm harping on about this now is because we're going to start building our relay-based CPU soon, and I'm going to use wired OR gates pretty extensively. This is a register board for the CPU, which I'll explain later, but it uses the idea of wired OR gates, particularly to transfer information. Alright, that's the main point of this video, but there is something I want you to think about for the next video. We use two inverters because it has two stable states, whereas our single NOT gate feeding back into itself is astable. This feedback loop causes an oscillation, which is also known as a race around condition or a hazard. Now, unfortunately, the SR latch isn't completely free of race around conditions. What if I connect the Q output to reset and the other output, which is called Q bar, back up to the set input? Let's say we're in the 0 1 configuration. Can we predict what will happen? Each OR gate will have an input which is 1. The output of both OR gates will be 1. This causes the output of the inverters to go to 0. This feeds back to the input of the OR gates. As a result, the output of the OR gates will go back to being 0, and the output of the inverters will be 1. This feeds back and turns on the output of both OR gates, and we're back at the start of the cycle. So, once again, we're in a race condition where the outputs will oscillate. I've built this circuit from relays, and we can see that it oscillates. I'll end this video here, but I want you to think about a way we might solve this before you watch the next video. But for now, don't forget to like, share and subscribe.